Hey everyone, welcome to Artistic Painting Studios Guest Retailer Spotlight. Today, that's me, Maury Curtis Dunbar from Paint and Studio, and we are here to have some fun. Now, I will repeat this again later on in the live, but you have just a few days left to sign up for Jen's Painting Group. Uh, she's closing it for the year on June 30th, and let me tell you folks, I'm joining. I haven't done it yet because I've been busy painting today, but I am definitely joining. By the end of today, I will be a member. So do not miss your chance to become a member of Jennifer's Painting Group. She gives the best tips, the best information. I've known her forever. I get information from her every day. So it's worth every penny to join her painting group. So do not miss this. She's closing it on June at the end of June 30th and will not be opening it again for the rest of the year. So don't miss your chance to be a part of this. All right, now I will repeat that again later, but I'm going to get into our project. And once again, we ask you to sprinkle the love here because the more we sprinkle, hey, Rima, hey, Laura, hey, Rose, nice to see all of you here. Gosh, there's so many of you joining in. Thank you so much. So um, I'm going to repeat what I said earlier a little while ago. Uh, in a little while, just to remind everybody, if you didn't hear all of it before or when you come in later, I will say it again. But right now, we're going to get into some patriotic product, uh, projects. All right. Um, Jennifer's shown you many times the foiling of tiles and stuff. Well, I, fi I foil big tiles. These are two by six, uh, uh, two feet by six inches. These were <laughs> the floor tiles for the front of my studio. And I have a whole box of them left over. And I was keeping them for, you know, in case a tile broke or something, and I'll keep one or two around just for that, but I had a whole box. And well, look what I can do. I can make epoxied trays that are food safe. So we're gonna do some in a patriotic theme today. And I have all kinds of stuff prepared. All right, we're gonna flip down. Now we're a little dim in here today. I apologize for the lighting. Um, it's really hot and really humid, and if I start turning on more lights than this, I blow every fuse in the box. So <laughs> let, let's keep me from doing something dumb like that today. Keep your fingers crossed. All right, so flipping down. Now in front of me, what you actually are seeing, I also had one by one tiles because I had to redo my bathroom and this was the tile that I chose. It's a, a ceramic Carrera marble look. I can see it on the back. It's just a standard tile. Um, and when you're finished with these, you either put rather rubber stoppers or felt or something under there to keep it from scratching the table surface. So I think the first thing we're going to do with this one, we're going to go red, white, and blue. We're going to do our stripe foils and release. Now I am watching my clock because I don't want to take over Jennifer's channel forever. And I know she's got going to come back live after I'm done. We're, we're sort of trading lives, and I'm going to go back live on my own page later. If I don't finish up here, I'll finish up there. So we are all just foiling fools today. All right, this is my foil. Uh, that's the red, white, and blue stripe. Now, my adhesive is so well applied here, it's already wanting to grab it. So my stripes could end up a little crooked. I hope they don't, but they might. I'm pretty good here. All right, I'm just gonna smooth this with my hand at first. And I love getting the little bubble under there because if I can shift it around, it helps release the adhesive. And I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you what I did. Um, with the tile, I used Prime Etch, which is a high bonding primer designed for tough to bond surfaces like tile and ceramics and glass and for mica and all that sort of stuff. If you don't you want to use that, you can use XIM, let it cure. Then we applied a coat of set coat metallic navy on here. If you didn't see it before, this is the color. And then we applied a coat of Art uh, Artsyville foil adhesive, Jennifer's amazing foil adhesive, and let it set up for an hour. So this has been, these were primed and painted yesterday, and then I put the foil adhesive on this morning, so we are well cured. And if you watch, I'm doing this with my hand, and the reason I'm doing that, A, the heat from my hand helps the release, but B, 
the more I can release without using a scrubbing tool, um, the less likely I am to have anything like scrub marks. And I can get like a little bubble going and you can't easily see that on the screen. Oh, hi Lynette, hi Shelly, thank you. Now, if I don't see your questions, just know I'll go back and look at them and check it all out. All right, so I'm gonna take my soft scrub. This is a soft scrub brush versus a very stiff one because I find that that gives me less scrub brush marks when I do that, which is my preference. I like this as solid as possible. All right, so I've got that. I have been scrubbing. I'm gonna get around my sides here because I did actually remember to put foil adhesive on the side, although that is not my priority. I just wanna make sure the whole thing looks complete. All right, here we go. Oh, this is gonna be good. Look at that. Nearly flawless release. You can see a few little speckles here because every surface is imperfect, but damn, sorry for the curse, but damn. That's a good release. Look how nice that is. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do with this, now I made decals on my Cricut Maker to go onto these tiles. You can pour epoxy right over both the, uh, the foil and these stickers, so that's what we're gonna do. I'm going to peel this back, and then we're gonna apply it to the, to the tile. And I gotta take my time to do this so that um, I don't lose any of the bits and pieces on here. Big ones, I, I usually roll back and then slide it across. Small ones like this, I can just roll all the backing off and um, then apply it. And if you pour, like to pour epoxy like I do, you can, you should, if you have, uh, any of this kind of paper around. This is silicone paper, and you can pour epoxy on something directly over this and it will never stick. So I keep all my silicone paper chunks all the time. So I'm gonna stick my, I don't know where I wanna stick it, but I think I don't wanna stick it dead center because I wanna put some other stuff on here. We're gonna put that on, we'll put that on like that. Now, I may take a little of the foil off of here. If you don't want that to happen, uh, top coat this before you apply anything like a sticker. And I make, like I said, I make these right on my um, Cricut Maker that I bought for the studio. And it will, it can change the sheen a little bit once we finish putting all of our stuff on here. It'll all be uniform again because of the way I'm applying things, but look how cool that looks on there. All right. That's fun. Look how fun that is. Hey, Maddie, nice to see you. Oh my gosh, I love this. All right, so I also cut, because I've been cutting and piecing and doing this for two days, because I'm redoing my, store, my studio window for all of this. I also have some more like this. Um, now, this could be a challenge because I'm, an, I'm not that smart. Uh, I thought this was backing tape and this is actually, and, uh, or backing or transfer tape and it's actually stencil adhesive. So they were a little tougher to remove when I did them on smaller things. So I'm, I'm gonna ask you all to be patient with me while I peel this back. First thing I gotta do is burnish it a little bit to make sure it sticks to <laughs> everything that it's supposed to stick to, and then it can challenge me when I try to release it. So again, I'm rolling these back like this, gently, carefully, and it will want to leave little bits and pieces behind. So I'm gonna push that up so you can see my hands a little better. I'm gonna burnish that down there so I can pull it back and just only take the backing off. If you see little bits of your pattern come off, Roll it back down and restick it to the vinyl. Okay, see now I have two little stars there, but I can't easily re roll that back to <laughs> where they belong over here. So I'm just going to carefully peel that off the backing, watching my fingers because everything's sticking to me now. And it goes over here. And 
and this is just a little picker thing that I got from when I was buying these kind of stencils from places like Modelo. Um, but quite frankly, I have so many of them, I don't even know where I got them all from. Okay, so now I've got this, and so we'll stick this, let's get it over here like that. Again, I'm really working to rub the pattern down, not the tape, especially since this wasn't what I thought it was going to be. So I know I can do this and I know I can get it to release because I released it on other stuff earlier. But um, yeah, this could be a little more time consuming because I'm just not that smart. Or it's going to go really well. Holy guacamole. And as you can see, again, I'm not pulling straight up because that puts a lot of tension on the surface. I'm rolling it back because it will release better that way. Okay, I didn't expect that. I, you, I, you heard me say I expected that to be problematic because of the fact that I use stencil adhesive. Well, now I know I can use it as backing tape because I hated it as stencil adhesive. So, wow. I mean, just look how cute that is. Just that alone. All right, I'm watching my clock because we are going to put epoxy on these before I'm done today. And I have a couple more of these, so if I decide they need to go somewhere else, that's where they're gonna go. All right, so now that we're in the two foot tile, that's six inches. So we did the striped one. I think what I wanna do on this is we're going to do our blue glitter stars. I just really like this combination. So we're gonna do the blue glitter stars and then we're going to, um, I think we're gonna do red lettering over it and then maybe some silver fireworks. I have all these ideas in my head. All right. Okay, so I've got my piece of foil. I'm bringing it all the way up here. I'm going to smooth it with my hand. And again, I did foil the edges of everything so that I can try to have a consistent look on this all the way around. Again, I'm rubbing it with my hand because the, and I'm trying not to scrape my rings on this too because that actually creates marks underneath this. So if you're doing a lot of hand rubbing, I suggest you take your rings off or you learn to lift your fingers really high. Um, and again, the heat's going to help release this. Let's move this up because I keep pulling things back to me. Maybe I should just shift the camera a little bit. That would help. There we go. Sorry about that. I keep, I pull things to me for stability and then it goes out of the camera frame and I'm trying to be better. I am notorious for ignoring what's on in and out of the frame. <laughs> I get so involved in my, my, my stuff that I just wanna keep playing with it and forget that the camera's here. And by the way, I've done so many lives recently that even when I'm not filming, I still talk to the camera. It's kind of a, a sick thing. Oh gosh, yes, that came out so nicely. Look how nicely that came out. All right, you can see all those gorgeous blue glitter stars in there. Look how pretty that is. So I've applied all of that. Um, I'm gonna go back and just rub with my hand because I know if I rub with the scrub brush here after releasing, because there was just a little spot that needed a little extra release. If, I know that if I go back and scrub over this with my scrub brush, I could um, leave scrub marks that I don't wanna do. So I'm trying not to do that. All right, now we're gonna go over this one with, what, did, what, what were we gonna do? We're gonna do silver, sorry. I'm trying to remember the order of things I had. I, like I said, I have tons in my head. So we've got Independence Day and I had, if you saw me earlier, I did a live where I did um, 
everything that needed to be done to create these, including the measuring out and stuff. So this was already pre-sized to fit my um, project. And now this is done with the correct backing tape. So of course, since this is what I'm supposed to use, I don't like the stencil final that released so well, this will probably give me a really big headache because the other one worked so well. All right. And again, I'm trying to release this whole thing so I can place the lettering the way I want it. It's easier for me to see. But on really big ones, you cannot do this. You actually, you, you must kind of peel it back like this, place it, and then slide the rest of the paper out. Otherwise, you're gonna have really big folds and buckles. I know Jennifer's watching to make sure that I don't run into her time because she's got a lot planned. We're both like foiling maniacs this, today. Okay, this is gonna say Independence Day and I wanna see whether I wanna put it over here and then put fireworks. I think I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna put it all the way over because that way if I don't have to center it, then if it's not centered, I haven't screwed it up. I just gotta get the letters all the way on. Sorry, I gotta pull this a little closer so I can see it. Need to make sure all the, the letters fit all the way on here because I did measure them to fit exactly and there we go all right so I've applied this I'm rubbing my letters down and I'm gonna start rolling back my transfer fine uh, transfer tape now again like I said this will not show because I'll have little, slight little buffs here, uh, or not buffs, but little um, marks on here from releasing the foil without having sealed it. So if that's bothersome to you, I know that when I finish this, it won't show, but if that's at all concerning to you, put a top coat over this before you put your, your, uh, your lettering or anything else on. You just put a very thin top coat on. You won't have any change in your, um, stencils or on your foil surface. All right, we're going to do this one. We're going to put these over here and I have a couple little red ones to stick on here so we can get red, white, and blue on everything. And then we're going to epoxy it. Another, we're going to do them all. I think we should, might be able to get it all in. I might have actually planned myself well enough for a change. <laughs> um, if you notice, I'm laughing at myself a lot because anybody who's known me I have been like just forgetful and badly timed and badly organized lately I'm gonna tear this off so I can work with those little details over here so <laughs> when I'm showing up for stuff and remembering things I'm, I'm impressed with me right now I, I'm like my husband is like do you know what day of the week it is? No. I don't, honey. Sorry. All right. Let's put that on there. Get that right there. And this is just going to be super cute. And this is adhering really well to the foiled surface. So I'm very pleased with that because I had few surfaces that I was challenging myself with today and um, when I challenge myself I really challenge myself okay that's on there and I think because we have three tiles that I set up I also have some of these little starbursts that ha because this pattern had um, different things cut out for it so I'm gonna take some of this we're gonna put a little red in here and really, just so you understand, when I cut this one, I had to weed it. So in the center of each of these starbursts were these little stars. I purposely kept them for this project. Oh, Lorraine, thank you. Right, let's put a couple of these little starbursts in here. And I'm just using, you know, the standard I don't even need to cut this. I could just peel it back because I the way I placed this stuff. All right. 
right. Oh, come on, peel off of there, you little stinker. Well, I sort of had my designs worked out in my head in advance, which, you know, that's another thing that's I consider lucky that I thought it I thought it had. <laughs> so the the laying this out is going quite simply for me. I'm not having I'm not fighting my ideas because I have them all. They're right here. Okay, we're gonna put a couple of these over here. just doing it that way. I mean, I could do more here. I could put tons more stuff on here, but I'm trying for once in my life to keep things simple. It's hard for me. I, if, if it's bright, bright and shiny and glittery, my first reaction is, why not put on more? <laughs> all right, so I'm making sure all of my sticker is down. And really, that's what you've made. I mean, I, you can call it whatever you want. You can call them transfers, you can call them stickers, you can call them whatever you want. But when you cut these out with your adhesive vinyl, that's what you're doing. So look how cute that's gonna be. We're gonna set that one aside. We're gonna put, the, uh, put down our stuff on our last one, and then we're gonna pour epoxy. Yay! Let me find my last one. Here it is. I knew I put it over here. This is what happens. You start doing crazy stuff. All right, I'm going to give you all a choice of three silvers. We have silver glitter stars. Hey, Melanie. We have silver waterfall and silver holographic 3D stars. Somebody tell me which one to use. I'm not using anything until y'all give me some ideas. <laughs> I know you all have thoughts. If you leave it to me, somebody's going to be disappointed. Somebody put in a vote here. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna... Well, nobody's saying anything. <laughs> okay, then. Well, I'm going to choose then 3D holographic score. Oh, nope. Melanie got the stars, okay. Waterfall, waterfall, two waterfalls, one stars. Holographic stars, okay, we got holographic stars. I'm gonna assume that you all want the 3D stars, not the glitter stars, since we did the glitter stars in blue on the other one. So I'm gonna take you at your word. We're gonna do the 3D holographic stars. Pull a piece. Cut a piece of that. Take my roll back up so it doesn't unroll across the table because <laughs> it will. How do I know? Because I've done it. Um, and if you look at this, I actually splooged something on the bottom of this roll earlier today. So it's a good thing we're using this. It gets rid of all the, the, the bad stuff. All right, let's put that on here. And we're gonna rub. Get rubbing with my palm so I don't scrape it with my rings. Of course, I could take my rings off, but um, if I take my rings off, I'll lose them. And while I could lose some and not be in trouble, I think my husband would really PO'd if I lost my engagement ring in my wedding band. Let's not, let's not end up the Saturday with on that note. Let's, let's not do that. Okay, so I'm gonna rub and I'm gonna rub and I am getting such good transfer with this. I can't tell you how excited this makes me. This is to, for all of you who said you struggled getting good release. Well, I'm showing you, you can get spectacular release. All right, where's my soft little scrubby? There it is. Okay, 
okie dokie. And you know, if you get a bad spot, like I had right there, because there's a little dimple of dirt on it, um, all you have to do is put the foil back down and rub over it. Now see, because I found that one little bad spot, I can actually now catch some other bad spots that I can see is gonna be a problem in the light. And I can see those little, and with darker colors, some of that doesn't matter, but when you're in a light color like this, those little flaws over a dark background are gonna show a lot. So I try to get as many of them taken care of as possible. Oh, that's good. Now, again, not perfect, not flawless. You can see there's little bits left behind, but darn, that's good. And we will resolve the issue of all the other little stuff. But look how good that is. Look how cool that is. And I actually kind of love that blue speckle bleeding through because that's gonna look super sharp um, with the, the uh, red lettering over it. Um, Shelly, we're gonna turn, we're gonna put our epoxy on these and these are gonna be food safe. So you can use them for decoration. You can use them to put make cheese platters or charcuterie, or you can put chips and dip on them, or you could put candles and decorations on them. They're gonna be useful for all things because our epoxy, once it's cured, is food safe. And I'm just cutting off all these extra little bits and pieces here so that I can lay this lettering out a little better. Cut off all our extra fireworks because they'll get placed later. Okay, the only one I can't cut off is the one that's attached to the letter K here. Um, so I want to look at my placement a little bit. I could always push it over to, since I did that one, the other one to the one side, so we're going to do maybe we'll push this one over this way. And I need to burnish this because I haven't. And what this burnishing does is it makes sure that the vinyl sticks to the transfer tape so that it will release from the backing. I think if I'm gonna release on this one, I'm gonna release on this end. So I think I wanted to back that all up. Right. Roll this back just a little. Okay, now you're gonna understand what I'm talking about with the rolling it underneath. Okay, because this one is so long and I know I'm gonna have an issue transferring it if I don't sort of just roll it back. Put it here. We're going to start here. And this is going to take a second to get the whole letters released because they don't want to let go. I'm going to take that little extra bit of paper off because that'll make my life easier. All right, so I'm going to roll this this way. I'm going to make sure that I'm peeling all of this off. That's what I needed to let go, right there. And just take your time with this. Do not try to speed through this kind of a process. You will not be happy with what happens if you do. And there we go. Now this is releasing a little better just because I've gotten rid of all that extra spiky stuff, but I'm still going to have to go back and check things like the point of the W to make sure it releases from the backing vinyl and then doesn't roll under when I lay it back down. I just want to be cranky today. I told you the other one's released so easy that this is going to be the one, there's going to be one that's going to fight me a little bit. Today it's going to be fireworks gonna be the word fireworks there we go. Here, we peeled that off all right so now we have our fireworks on here we're gonna release the backing tape and you, I patch my backing tape together my transfer tape if I need to so I don't um, 
waste it. Because I, you're, you're going to end up, if you use this stuff, you're going to end up with a ton of scraps no matter what. It just is what happens. So I try to make use of them. All right, here we go. And it's all coming up. Um, if I miss any of your questions, I come back and write out the answers. Um, and if I don't make any sense with what I'm saying, tell me, because that means that I'm not giving you the information in a way that makes sense. And that can happen, because stuff will sound great in my head, and then it comes out my mouth and it does not make any sense at all. All right, so I've got my fireworks on here. Let's get our little explosion bursts. Ah, come on, don't be crabby. See, like this, I can just peel off, no problem. And I'm just gonna take half that extra piece of transfer tape. Put some fireworks up here. Make sure it all stays adhered to the surface. There we go. And I got a little tiny bit hanging off over here. Hey, Cheryl. Uh, Robin, what vinyl am I using? I am using Cricut's holographic uh, glitter vinyl. Okay, I'm just clip that little bit off the edge there. We had a couple more of these to release and then we're going to move on to the epoxy part of this, which is then what makes it so usable for so many things. All right, throw that over there. Um, it's a good thing you all can't see what this looks like around here because while it looks nice and tidy, right here. I throw things <laughs> and there's just heaps of stuff all around me. All right, let's get this off. Come on, come on you little sucker. Come off of there. And we got it almost, we got a little piece of transfer vinyl right there. Let's get this last one off. There we go. Oh, that one's coming off the backing nicely. I think I should stick one right there. I could put one there, but it looks like then I'm trying to put the dot over the R, not the I, and the dot in that I is right there. Oh, Shelly, yeah, watch it. I mean, it's really easy. Um, you have a Cricut cut and skin and you rarely use it. Well, I'm using a Cricut maker, so I, I don't know the cut and scan, um, but I gotta tell you, I have been used, I, I had hoped I was gonna use my Cricut maker a lot because, you know, it's an investment, but I also know that, I've also heard the stories of people who have it in the box in their house for like years. So, but I gotta tell you, I bought it and I made myself open the box and do the basic setup. And once I got through the basic setup, it was really, it's really user friendly. Now, I've done multiple layer stencils with it and layered cutouts and, and that's fine, but that's not really what I do. What I want is things like this for making something cool like that. So, all right, I'm gonna put, we're gonna move on to the epoxy part. So the first thing I'm gonna do, well, maybe that's not the first thing I'm gonna do. Maybe the first thing I should do is mix the epoxy and get all these rolls of foil out of the way so I don't ruin them when I pour the epoxy because I have done that. I have made the mistake, fortunately, it was a nearly empty roll and it wasn't a foil that I liked that much anyway. But I have literally dip the end of a roll in epoxy without knowing it. <laughs> All right, let's, let's move that out of the way. 
Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do, take two cups, and we're gonna use our liquid glass. Um, this is perfect for this surface. It dries very, very hard. So it's, it's very compatible with uh, working on a, a rigid surface. Let me find my gloves. Sorry, I gotta, I keep finding more rolls of foil that I have to move out of the way. And I keep a couple pairs of gloves whenever I do epoxy. I know other people like to uh, layer gloves. I can't stand that because then I end up pulling them all off. And I know people will clean their gloves with alcohol. I hate doing that too. I just rather pull them off because I've already credited them up. I usually get them so bad that cleaning them is not a possibility. Um, there are a lot of you I know who work very, very tidy in the studio. That's not me. Um, I am pig pen in the studio. So, all right. So, just so you know, this is our liquid glass. Um, Jennifer's gorgeous high gloss epoxy. The nice thing with this, when you buy the box, it tells you the coverage, the average coverage that you're gonna get for the size of the container you've purchased. Love it, love this. Um, and it's really easy to use, you just have to pay attention to your measurements. All right, so I'm gonna pull this to me so you can see what I'm doing. So we have, you pour these exactly one to one. You have a hardener and you have a resin. So first I'm gonna pour one into one cup. And I have a pretty good idea how much I need for three tiles. I'm gonna make one master batch because I'm probably going to add different colored glitters to this that might not be great on all of them. I might wanna just um, do solitary glitter colors. I don't know. I'll make up my mind when I get there because that's the kind of gal I am. All right, and make sure as soon as you put finish pouring out of your container, you put the cap back on because if you switch the lids, you're gonna permanently bond your lid to your bottle and you'll never get it to work. You'll never get it apart. You'll actually have to cut it off. All right, so now you pour exactly the same amount. If you are not a good eyeball measure, and I don't recommend people eyeball measure unless you're really, really, really good at it, um, measure exactly. Now, the hardener is more liquid than the uh, resin is. So when you mix, you're going to pour the thick product into the thin product. Why? Because it's easier to mix that way. So we're gonna scrape the sides. Now, um, I've been doing epoxies for years and normally they recommend that you use a flat bottom container without any ridges and stuff because then it's easier for you to scrape and mix properly. Um, and that's definitely what you want to do. You don't want to mismix this. What, here's what happens. If you get too much hardener and not enough resin, your epoxy sets up much faster and it becomes very brittle and it does not hold up well. If you add too much resin and not enough hardener, then your epoxy actually never hardens. It'll stay gummy. And if you don't mix this well enough, um, you need to, you're gonna have uh, soft spots across your finish. You'll have places that don't cure properly if it's not mixed well. Uh, but I did go back to the company website and they said if that happens, then remix a new batch and pour it properly this time and it will harden over the soft spot. All right, so the instructions say mix well for two minutes. 
and I'm an aggressive mixer, you don't worry about getting bubbles in it because that's what the blowtorch is gonna do. That's gonna take out all of that mess. So you're gonna stir, stir aggressively. Now this is fairly low odor. Smells like most other epoxies, two epoxies. And I'm going in here and I'm scraping the bottom, because, especially because it's not an even flat bottom. I gotta make sure I get in all the crevices in here and stir across because I am not going to have this fail on me because I didn't mix it well enough. And it boils down to, you can either set yourself a timer and stir for two minutes, and that's a lot of work, or you can mix and mix and mix and mix and mix and mix until you're convinced that it's mixed enough, and then go mix double that amount of time. It's about the same thing. Two minutes is, that's about how you come to two minutes. And it's gonna look whitish, and it's not. It's not turning white. What you're seeing happen is you, it's just bubbles. The bubbles make it look hazy. Um, if I let this sit, you'd see that the bubbles would start to clear and you'd have just perfectly clear liquid. It just looks whitish because of all the air I'm incorporating. All right, so that's mixed. We're gonna set that to the side for a minute so I can set all these up for me to pour. Oh, that's the wrong can. I need two. I'm using little cans of paint so that I can pour on the tiles and have no issues with that. Now, I'm gonna set up a spot off to the side that you may not see because I'm gonna to have to move tiles around so that we can stay in camera. Where's that one? That one right there. There's the other little one over here. Okay. Now, normally when I pour something, I don't move it again, but because we're doing this this way, yeah, I'm gonna have to move it around. All right, so we've got our Independence Day. Um, I'm gonna pour some of this epoxy into another container so I can pour a little glitter into it. And I think I like this one with, we have tinsel glitter. I think that'll look super fun on this. So now I'm gonna sprinkle a bunch of tinsel glitter into the epoxy. The epoxy does not dissolve the coating on this, so it stays nice and glittery. If this dries lumpy and I'm not happy with it because of the glitter, because the glitter could create a texture, if that happens, I give it a light scuff and pour on a second layer and it works and it levels everything out perfectly. All right, so now I'm gonna pour. Let me make sure that I am centered on the camera so you can see exactly what I'm doing. All right, so here we go. And for a tray like this, you probably need two or three ounces of epoxy. Obviously, I didn't measure that. And again, if you're mass producing these, if you make stuff like this constantly, um, knowing exactly how much you need in the way of epoxy and how much you need for paint and all that stuff helps you determine your costs. So yeah, that's a good thing to know too. Like I said, I've done these a bunch of times, so I just kind of eyeball it. And you can use all kinds of tools to spread this, including your hands. I'm simply taking a sponge brush and moving the epoxy all over the surface. And if you notice, I'm moving it in all different directions, and that's because if I do all this, all the glitter falls in that one direction. So I want to move the glitter in different patterns and it'll make a better look. All right. I made just about the perfect amount to coat this. And I'll go back in and scrape because there's a couple spots that I haven't hit yet. And I can even um, take my sponge with the epoxy on it 
sponge brush and just wipe it on the sides. Um, and I do do that all the time because what happens then is that I've created a slick area and I can even dip into my other bucket epoxy since I've basically used up all my glitter and go along here because this helps when this levels and epoxy likes to level to about an eighth of an inch thickness um, it will drip over the sides and if I create an epoxy slip on the sides meaning I've created a liquid spot on the sides it will drip evenly as opposed to having uneven dribbles all over it which doesn't look good and take a little more of this and just put it in this corner and mix it in with the other glitter all right let's make sure I got this to all the way to all the edges I'm gonna to torch these at the end because I this stuff is gonna stay sticky for quite a while um, the pot time meaning once you've mixed it up the time to uh, be able to work with it is about 45 minutes um, I went back into with the manufacturing information checked a lot of stuff if you want your epoxy to stay open longer, as in you're mixing up a whole bunch of stuff, you want to um, keep it in a thinner container. If you put this, if I mix this like a whole gallon of this and put it in a gallon can, it would get super hot and it would start to harden really fast. So to keep the open time longer, you put it in a larger, wider pan. Uh, I doubt most of most of us don't normally do epoxy that way, but it can happen. So it's always good to have it. All right, so we're gonna pour some more. Um, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? I know I figured this out I think earlier. So I'm gonna put a little glue blue glitter in this to sprinkle around, and I'm putting it in the batch pot so we're fine. And this is just craft store glitter. Um, that I happen to have on hand. And I'm gonna keep this glitter level because I love the blue peeking through and I love the more uh, contemporary, almost 70s disco feel of this one. I don't wanna add the glitter too much. So I'm just gonna, I put some blue glitter in here to be a little more blue since we have very little blue peeking on this and I'm going to pour that off there and take another sponge brush I'm going with a clean one and dip it in this epoxy helps my uh, spreading if my brush already has a little epoxy in it so sometimes I'd like to dip it and dip it into the container and we're just going to move this around So this tile is actually two square feet. It's six inches by 24. And no, I just, I'm an idiot. I just did bad math in my head. It's one square foot. It just, my brain wanted to say it's two square feet. Get the edges along here. And that will help that drip and flow. Do is I'll just hmm, let's see oh, I got a pocket of stuff that I missed here and I always try to like shift the light source on here so I can see if I have any empty spots because I do find them right there there's a little empty spot right there you gotta make sure you get her all the way to the edge too and this coating is quite thin that I've applied. You could apply it thicker, but remember, if the thicker you apply it, it levels to an eighth of an inch, so it's gonna just drip off if um, you overapply. All right, so I'm gonna put that there. And when 
we're going to our first one that we started on and we're going to finish this one up. All right, so I have blue glitter in here and I'm going to put, where is it? We're going to, we're going to go a little crazy on this one. We're going to put a little blue glitter. We're going to put some of the red glitter. And we're going to put some of the silver glitter in this one. We're going to make this one really full on fireworks. Of course, I could have pulled the sponge brush out of there. It probably would have been a smarter move, but it wouldn't be me doing the live if I'd pulled the sponge brush out and done it that way. All right, so we've got a lot. Oh, there's a lot of red in there, so I need to put some more blue. And while it looks like I'm coloring this stuff right now, it's really not how it's going to read in the end. It will clear and it will just add to the design. Let's hope I got it. Let's see if I made enough. We're going to find out. And if I didn't, I'll just mix some more and pour it on there. All right. Get all of that on there. I mean, that looks like candy I'm pouring. <laughs> all right, so let's mirror it around here. extra cups out of the way so that I can turn this and move the epoxy around and oh yeah this is gonna look great now obviously I have all that glitter clumped in the center so I have to make some effort to move it around looks like I, if it looks like I'm pulling some of this back off I actually am because I've applied it so generously that um, I don't need it all on here let's go around let's do this yeah, there we go because it was getting so thick there that I wasn't seeing any of the under color and that wasn't making me happy. Um, people tend to be a little afraid of epoxy and they handle it like, you know, it's going to bite them. I just treat it like another paint. I work it until I get what I need and then I let it dry. Again, I got to move some of this around a little because, whoops, that wasn't smart. I could be worried about that, except it won't hurt it. So I move this around like this because I got that tinsel glitter in here, and I really do need to um, make sure it doesn't all go in one direction because then it looks like crap if it happens. So I just want to pull some of this epoxy back. I was worried I had enough, and now I gotta take some of it off. Hey, this is so cute. Oh. Okay, um, Shelly is asking a question, so you won't see the brush marks or anything because it self levels, right? Yes, that's exactly what happens. And any marks that I might have just created, um, blob of stuff in there um, it will disappear as soon as I torch it so you can use a large um, blowtorch or you can use one of these kitchen style torches and I knock that fly. I'm keeping one um, glove on so that if I have to get into the mess in here with my I only mess up one hand okay so this is gonna and this is butane you just get them at Home Depot or you can use them from 
the food store and stuff, but the ones, believe it or not, are cheaper at Home Depot than like Sur La Table. I'm gonna light that and I'm just holding it and going parallel to the surface. And what that does is it causes, the heat causes the epoxy to liquefy really, really liquidy. And then that allows the bubbles to raise up. And it sort of looks like you can't see it. I don't think you can see this on camera, but it looks like it sizzles like steak because I can see the bubbles raising to the surface. Now don't hold your torch down into it like this. You do that, you get the heat that goes right through the epoxy and it'll burn through your foil, it'll burn through your stickers, it'll burn through your paint. And yeah, I've done it. So, and I've done it more than once because I'm not good at listening to my own advice sometimes. So we're gonna just torch this over the entire surface. going to flip this camera up, take off my other glove, and then we're going to talk while I torch these other two. So I'm doing these two over here. Um, so as I said earlier, do not miss this chance. Jennifer's painting group, which I believe she's calling Jennifer's painting group, and I will make sure I get the name correct and put it in the details of this post with all the product information. Um, it closes on the 30th, and I, you heard me before saying it. It is one of the best groups you could put your money on. I'm putting my money into it. I'm joining this group. Why? Because it doesn't matter how long or how short a time you've been doing this sort of thing. There are great tips. She's doing specials with her reactive rust if you sign up for the whole year. She's doing special tips and tricks with each one, things for application, making things go better for you, um, product information that you won't get anywhere else. I had a sticker that wanted to rise up a little. I gotta tap it down. Um, and that's all you do is you just take a piece of, I'm just taking this, let me swing down this way so you can see what I'm doing while I'm talking. Um, one of my little, Starburst here wanted to pop up so obviously I didn't burnish it down well enough so I just put some tapped it down through the epoxy and then we're gonna level the epoxy again and again if I'm not happy with how these dry I'll pour another layer of epoxy over it to make it a little thicker or a little more even or whatever uh, and I usually torch things one, a couple times just to make sure I got it every bubble um, you want to do this in as insect-free, <laughs> um, contaminant-free space as you can find. Um, I know no studio works that way. It's just last summer we were pouring countertops and we had flies in here. And every morning, every night, I'd pour the countertop and go home. And every morning I'd come in and have to dremel out flies, which is disgusting. And it was really, really frustrating. That really just wants to pop right up, doesn't it? That'll level. Um, back to what I was saying about Jennifer's group. It closes on the 30th, and it will not reopen again until next year. So if you, like I am, are a huge fan of Jennifer's, uh, definitely look into joining the group. By the way, um, it helps if you level your surface when you do stuff like this. Now, nothing in my studio's level. My tables even have a little dip in them. So I have to work to level things. And that's not level. That's level. Okay. All right, so we've torched this again. I'm torching this one again. So. Once again, Jennifer's painting group, do not miss the opportunity to join this because once she closes it at the end of this month, she's not opening it again until next year and you're gonna miss an awful lot of good information. Um, newbies and pros alike will get something out of it. I've known Jennifer for 
15 years and just in phone conversations with her, I learned stuff. So I'm telling you, don't miss this. Uh, okay. Oh, Gigi, I'm so glad. Thank you. Um, yeah, Jennifer is amazing. All right. Oh, you guys are so <laughs> funny. Thank you. I remind, I, I, I remind me of Kristen Johnson a lot, too, because I'm a big goofball who, who tends to make a lot of jokes at my own expense. <laughs> so thank you, everybody. All right. So I will finish this up. We are going to let all of this cure up. These will be food safe once they're cured. Now, full cure is 72 hours. It's not like other water-based products where you need 30 days. This is a chemical reaction that causes these things to cure. They are dry to the touch in 24 hours. Actually, they're dry to the touch more, more likely in 12, but they're really not safe to use for 24. 72 hours, full hard cure. Don't need to worry about it. All right. And then once they reach their full hard cure, that's when they are food safe. So don't forget to sprinkle. Don't forget to join Jennifer's group because that's my next job. As soon as I finish here, I'm joining Jennifer's group and then I'm going to do a live on my own page. And then I forgot what I was going to say. I was saying, don't forget to sprinkle. Don't forget to join Jennifer's group. And don't forget to have fun with this. We are enjoying 4th of July. It's going to be a little different this year, but it's going to be awesome. Uh, oh, can you, you, you can see... You can see the longer glitter, silver glitter on the square piece. Yes, you can. And actually, you can see it on the blue. That tinsel glitter is so cool. Oh, uh, what is my page? Painted Studio. Uh, and you can look me up by my name, too, and then that gets you to my page. But to this one, this, is all, this one's all about Jennifer, so don't forget to join her group. If you want to see what I'm going to do next, come and follow me on my page. But don't you dare not follow Jennifer. <laughs> All right, everybody, have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful Saturday. I'm going to go paint some more stuff. I'm, first, I'm going to go wash my hands and get all, I'm a little sticky. Talk to you later, all. Bye-bye.